done some time trialling and we found out how fast the software works and that's got written up on the uh, yeah we've got we've got some some write-ups and some dumps of the speed uh, basically the um, the shaft uh, move loop takes well, we got 18.6. I've actually revised that because there was a bug in that which made it go too quick. So it's actually about 18.9, I think. Yeah. Is it 18.6? Let me just uh, double check because it's not update. Where is it at? Yeah, the real value is is 18.9 microseconds. I've got to update that, yeah, because I've got the calculations wrong. 18.9 microseconds. And so what I've done is I've actually connected it up to my... CD CD motor, my little uh, model motor, just so we can play around with it. I've got it running at 32k sample speed, so you can't hear it. Um, and uh, that's obviously I'm um, that's. Let's put up the uh, output. So we're changing the, the the frequency, but because there's no output, I can. There's no resistance to this. You see, there's nothing. So that is zero. And if I can just feel those, these are a little bit warm because I uh, I made some issue. There were some issues with the connectivity. So they're a little bit warm, but they're also working at 32k, which is a higher frequency than normal. Anyway, so I can now bring in the uh, the PWMs, right? And you won't be able to hear anything, but you can see it twitching, and then I can move it. And it's because I'm actually at 40 WM, it's obviously locking it. But if I turn it down, let's try about 50%. Well, that'll work. See, it's turning now. I'm not on full, right? If I turn it up, I don't want what speed is. Oops, so there we go. Now I can turn it up, all right? Now I can get faster. Over there. And then as I turn it down, you'll see there. So that actually is below the level at which it would normally work. You see? You see? Now it's running. So you can really accurately control it. Oh, we'll be able to. Actually, that's probably in the motor, isn't it? Yeah, the motor's getting quite hot because I'm feeding a full PWM through it. Is the motor? Yeah. I've got some problem with the connectivity at the Arduino level as well. But never mind that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is... Uh, I hope you got that because I don't know if I was actually firing it at it. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to drop it to 4K instead of 32 so we're going to have that one okay let's restart okay right so we're now running at a frequency which we will be able to hear okay so if I bring it on oops that one isn't it there you go it's obviously quite a nice frequency so you can hear it as I bring it in. There we go. And it'll lose lock. There we go. So that's full, nice and shrill. And you can see just turn that off. You can see that at full frequency, right, I have I can just simply at will set the speed and it follows it. So that's because it's got too much power running through it. Oh dear. There we go. See, one of them, if I actually lose it, because it's three phase, one of them actually goes to negative. And so that means it puts a potential across it. But right now, all three are in phase, and you can see nothing. There's no resistance, it just turns. If I just switch off the power supplies, just to confirm, so you'll see those LEDs are all off, right, and now I spin it, you see, 
it just spins, you can see that it's it's kind of that's that's running free. I'll put the power supplies back on. There we go. Right. So now that's the same. See, there's no resistance. Just when I move that wire, which is annoying. Right. So now I can put put power on. There it is. And then I can just start it up. There we go. I'm going to too fast because I'll spin the magnets off. There we go. But that's going fast, isn't it? And as I slow it down, it follows. And I can... There's a problem with the PWMs, but you can see that that actually is turning slowly. But it's stable. That's the thing. I can turn the PWM up, you see. Just stop it from oscillating. There. Uh, And uh, because it's got low power, you see, I can stop that with my finger like that. You know, almost stop it with like just a piece of tape or something, because there's not much power on that at all. In fact, to turn it right down, you can see it's just got divvering around, and that's because there's magnets here which are against that, and it's all affecting the way it works. You see, and if I actually increase now, so it's low. But if I turn it up, the momentum makes it run better, and that'll be a, a you can. If you hear the turn frequency, and you watch it, it's a fixed frequency, it's turning at a fixed rate, which is dictated to by the software. So this is working, you see, let's turn it up a bit more. I'm almost at the limit of where it will maintain the PWMs. Because we've got, we're open loop here. That's it. So that's at the limit. You can I can hear it the way it's working from BLDC. That's at the limit of the PWMs. Just about. Right beyond that, it'll 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 probably just stop. It'll lose its uh, lose the magnetic traction as if it were and stop. I'm just trying to feel these to see if they're warm. Well, they are warm. You see. But that's because they're working in open loop, so we're driving everything harder than we need to. But as you can see, the system works. That's the controller with that software that we've just done with the time trialling and stuff. That's the controller itself, and the three phase output's being fed to a motor. So the whole thing obviously works. I didn't expect it not to, right? Um, we're trying to pick up the differencing between the. Uh, between two of the phases, but my scope isn't set up correctly for it. Yeah. Uh, actually, maybe I can just twist the trigger around. Let me just do that now, see if I can twist the trigger around. So it's on the right one. No. That's it. There we go. You see? And then if we take it back to. Oops. Nope. So if you just that's better, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. For some reason it works better like that. So you can see obviously that's the PWM. I'm not quite sure what the frequency is. It says the time there is three thirty three microseconds. Right? So it's about a third of a, a millisecond. And this will be because uh, you can see it's sloping, can't you? Just I don't know. I don't know what that means, to be honest, because that's between two uh, phases. It's across two phases, sorry. Mm. So I'm not quite sure what I'm expecting to see there. But hey, the SVM controller works, AC synthesis, doesn't it? Looks fine, actually. Yeah. You're not going to see anything other than just six LEDs because it's going faster. Than, uh, than is required by law. <laughs> Not really. But it, the, the output is fast enough. Um, it might be handy to keep those on because then obviously if you have one blown then you'll see one of those LEDs go out and the other one stay on or something. So it'll, it'll show you if there's something wrong. But that's working very nicely actually. I'm very chuffed. Right, it's now half past eight so I'm going to go. We've done an awful lot of work. I might just leave that on actually. Yeah. 
because I'm pretty tough. That's a 4K sampling frequency for the PWMs. <coughs> I calculated that basically you're talking about somewhere between 15 and 40 miles an hour that you'll be able to actually uh, drive under SVM before you start losing the uh, accuracy. Well, it's actually 15 miles an hour. You can only go up to about 15 miles an hour. And that's that's in that motor which goes at 50, 65,000 RPM. 6500 RPM and assuming that the, the full speed of that is 100 miles an hour the equivalent speed at which you have full uh, PWM synthesis uh, AC synthesis is only 15 miles an hour but that's fine because we only um, we only want to go up to uh, we only deal we only want to deal with low speeds on this we don't want to deal with high speeds because high speeds will be done with a BLDC algorithm the synchronous torque one Right, high speed and high power will be dealt with that. This is this is just simply for the control at low speeds, which which the BLDC doesn't really have. <coughs> you know, as much as I try, it's just a fudge. But this is the stuff that does the low speed. So the controller is going to switch between this, which is the SVM, the AC synthesis one, right, and the BLDC. Yeah. So what I need to do basically is probably rag an awful lot of that circuitry off, put this onto there, and then uh, connect it up properly, and then uh, we'll test it out with the uh, with our six um, things. But also I'm going to redo this disc because uh, the magnets keep flying off and it's stupid. So I'm going to redo it so the magnets don't fly off, and so we can take it up to its full, you know, really high speed, and we can test it out at full speeds and see what happens. Because mm. interestingly enough, it, this SPM algorithm, it's good enough, right? And if I take it up, I'll take up the power. That's full power now. There. Uh, I did take it up to full power, but I'm guessing some of these magnets have already thrown off. I don't know what the RPM was that I was at, but it was obviously pretty high. Oops. Yeah, don't know what it was at. Um, probably in the region of about two thousand RPM, I would say, two and three thousand RPM, somewhere in there. And that's around about sort of the five hundred mark, I think. Once you lose it, you lose it. So it has to maintain the lock. That should be all right. There we go. That's on. What are these like? Probably cooked them a bit. Yeah. I need to improve the circuitry on there as well. Because part of the reason why all that stuff's burnt out is because I'm being putting amps through this. Like three. <laughs> And uh, these poor little devices, they're only supposed to be for about half an amp. So I've been frying the old circuit. So that's why, that's basically the reason why I put it onto uh, this. <coughs> and now I've got it on this. I'm going to see if we can uh, beef up the tracks as well so we can get, you know, so it can handle like the 10 amps that the outputs are designed for. And then once I've done that, that, that circuit's then ready for completely, you know, totally ready for testing. Yeah. And then we'll start mounting all of this up and put proper testing in there. It'll be cool. But also, this is the uh, this is the Class D version. This is the Class D uh, amplifier output version, uh, which I believe is here. Got it. So. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, we're using. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so we're using get up. Yeah, you can see this is the. Uh, oh, must be the battery's going or something. This is the class D. So that's that circuit. Okay. All of that, I think, including the uh, the biasing resistor. So we're using that circuit for this three channels of. That's only one channel. That's only one channel, obviously. And we've got three channels on there. 
So that's being used. Okay, so we've got that working, the Class D version. Yep, Class D push-pull, that's all there. And we've got our SVM algorithm in here. So we're using, uh, yeah, okay, not that. Yeah. Yep, using this guy, our SVM algorithm. Yep, so we've got this SVM algorithm and we're using this circuit. So we've now got all of the uh, feasibility done. The motor works. All we need to do now is, is complete the uh, software with the closed loop. And what we need then is to do the, uh, we need to mount all this up properly so we can do testing, uh, the development of the software for the um, software flywheel version. Yep. And then once we've done that, we've then got our completed SVM, our AC synthesis with the software flywheel. Yeah. And then we can start building the controller to switch between um, AC synthesis and Brussels DC. But we also need to fix that so that it doesn't start throwing magnets off. But it's all good. It's all really good. Right. I'm going to call it a day at that. I think I can leave it.